Coming up tonight on Game All Night, Berkey talks about food, and apparently I ruin escape rooms. Welcome to Game All Night. All right. Well, today I'm joined by Kevin Berkey, Berkmeister, game topper extraordinaire. How are we doing today, sir? <laughs> oh, it's fantastical. How are you doing, Chris? Great, great. Now, you are right in the middle of uh, starting your Kickstarter distribution, am I correct? I think you actually started that last night. Yeah, it's actually the last two days. I, I drove about two hours away to our fulfillment center and uh, just fine tuning some of the processes to make sure things are going out correctly. So it's a lot of fun. I was glad I was there. We had a couple of hiccups and uh, it's great to be on site and be able to manage those things. Absolutely. Now, what do you do when you're not, let's see, when you're not doing the Berkey and Badger show, you're not doing game toppers and you're not fulfilling food orders from Happy Mouth? What What do you do in the, all your downtime? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a little thing called sleep. Uh, there's a little bit of Netflix uh, mixed in there because you wake up and you're thinking about all the things that I do. And then you watch Netflix to go back to sleep. And then you get up and do all those things again. <laughs> so what Netflix things are putting you to sleep these days? Uh, the Office. Reruns okay. of The Office. That'll do it. <laughs> Have you caught anything interesting and fun on there yet? Because uh, I'm definitely a Daredevil fan. Uh, I haven't really done that, but my wife and I just started to revisit Stranger Things season two. Okay. How do you like that? I haven't, I started watching the first one, but I'm not a big horror guy, so it didn't really work for me. Yeah, I'm not a big horror guy either, but I, I, I kind of like that cliffhanger. Uh, I don't know if this is a good analogy, but you remember when 24 first came on? Oh, I just love that. Uh -huh. I mean, you had to watch two episodes, okay. not 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 one. You had to watch two or maybe three. It's like having another whole bag of Lay's potato chips, right? And and Stranger <laughs> Things gives me that same feeling that there's just a little bit of, uh, oh, something's going to happen. It never really does. So it kind of always lets you down, but you always feel like something's going to happen. Interesting. So, so what is it about it that's working for you? Is it like the 80s nostalgia or something like that? Or Oh, I love that. Absolutely love that. I uh, love the kids and the whole, I don't know, it feels like you're in junior high, I think. Yeah, they, you know, they actually came out with an RPG called Kids on Bikes that they're uh, putting out that's kind of based on that whole, like that genre when we were kids and that's how we got around, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. You get the old banana, banana seat and that dates me a little bit, but those were cool. Uh, I think it dates both of us. I don't think you have any, too much to worry about there. <laughs> But yeah, it was uh, <laughs> life was different, man. Until you got your license, that bike was your your link to the world. That's for sure. Now, you did you grow up in Minnesota? Because that's where you are these days. Yeah, I'm in Minnesota. Yeah, sure, you betcha. Yeah, you know. But no, I actually grew up in <laughs> North Dakota, which is kind of the same okay. thing, except flatter. It's like the the Southern Canadian influence, right? Yeah, actually, because I grew up in Minot, North Dakota. Why not Minot? And there's an Air Force base up there, a pretty good sized one at the time. And and so most of my family and relatives are all up in that area. But we're not that far from the Canadian border. So in the summers, when we'd go to camp, we'd take the North Canoes and actually go across the border via via Lake Metagoshi, oh. stop at this place <laughs> and get this amazing Macintosh caramels. Crazy awesome. Caramel apples, I assume, right? No, it's 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 toffee. It's caramel uh, from a company called Macintosh, and it's funny because Mandy Hutchinson. A lot of you guys know, love Mandy to death. She's such a sweetheart. Um, I told her <laughs> about my growing up and getting Macintosh toffees, and I'd went back up to Canada, and they didn't have it anymore. They had these little wrapper ones, but they used to have these right. bars of it. It was the best. And so okay. the next time we were together at Dice Tower Con, she comes and gives me a whole bag of Macintosh toffees. 
Very nice. Yeah, you got to be careful what you say around people. You will wind up with a bag of something. You better worry about yeah. what you say around me because I might want some of those chocolates too now. <laughs> 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 Gary's just going to like eat them all on you. You got to be careful. I'm, I'm dieting now, but uh, I might have to sneak one maybe at Dice Tower Con. I, I, I have to ask at least. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm doing low carb now too. So what are you doing, Gary? Uh, I'm doing low carb, low calories. Um, I literally just finished fasting for a week. So, uh, I'm like, I had to do that. I I, I always do that before I start diets because then when I'm out of the diets, I'm like, anything is good. I'll eat any salad, like anything. (laughs) And also I want to eat smaller portions too as well. So, but, um, but yeah, I'm doing the same thing. (laughs) I need to hook you up with some Burke's happy mouth spice because it, it makes low carb, delicious and uh, let let you tolerate the whole thing oh i i remember someone talking about that last year and um it was like i don't know it was maybe like the third or fourth day of dice tower con so i found out way too late so i walked over and mm. i was just like and I, no i didn't walk over to you actually um i asked someone else and it was like no he just ran out. i literally just asked him like 10 minutes ago and i was oh. like oh no i've been hearing about that spice all weekend <laughs> I, I usually have a backpack full of it and I make homemade jerky that I bring to the cons. And so people are always hit me up for a, oh. a bag of jerky or a bag of happy mouth. So oh, man. there's oh, a funny, my, funny story oh. about that. Uh. <laughs> uh, give, give it give, <laughs> talking happy mouth spice. But um, uh, I met Dan Hughes at Dice Tower Con last year. OK, I love this guy and Jude, too. Uh, we just had so much fun and I gave him a bag of happy mouth and he went this is awesome. And he took it home. His wife just went nuts over it. Well, they contacted me. We're, Happy Mouth is in the UK now, baby. I thought you were going to go down with the uh, the story of Chris from the Secret Cabal stealing your whole bag and uh, distributing that jerky at the Cabal meetup two <laughs> years ago. <laughs> that was crazy funny. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, Chris was there and I I had a bag, but this wasn't like a little bag with six or seven pieces. This was like two pounds of of smoked jerky that I brought in. And I go, here, you want to try some jerky? He goes, yeah. And he takes the whole bag and he he grabs it. He starts walking around with it and he's handing out jerky. And I'm like, well, that was good. (laughs) And I, I got to try some this year, and that stuff is amazing. That was completely delicious. We were sitting out after the Cabal meetup, and y'all were having some cigars, and it was a, it was a great way to end the con. I mean, that Saturday night was something special. That really was. I really enjoyed that. Hey, you know, it was at the tow yard. Well, guess what? We put our we parked our suburban because we had a game, couple game toppers in there and things that we were giving away and stuff at the cabal, and we were going to pack up, but we parked over by the Hardys, and it was twelve right. o'clock. You're supposed to be out of there, and they were hooking up my truck to tow it away at the tow yard. Oh no! Oh, crazy! Did you save it? We saved it. We still had to pay him seventy five bucks. Ah. Uh. One no, of those deals, but he uh, had a gun, so I wasn't going to argue with him. No, no, don't argue with toe guys. The um, <laughs> yeah, that was actually where you and I met for the first time. Uh, you brought some uh, some toppers over to the Cabal meetup because uh, they they had one set up there, correct? And it was uh, yeah, it was pretty nice. Of course, they're all around Gen Con. They were everywhere. I don't think i can't i can't count how many people had those things on their booze you really um and you did that out of pocket i mean didn't you well it was kind of an interesting thing because it all started almost a year ago that at gamma trade show i had made five different generations of wooden prototypes my dad and i had built them and we were we were trying hard to do something really cool with with the wooden but we knew that that wouldn't be a duplicatable you know a cost effective type of solution. But nonetheless, I made a video right. of my idea and I showed it to Stefan Bruchot from Yellow Games, showed it to a ton of other publishers at Gamma. And and they they just loved it. Why hasn't somebody done this? We love this. And and at that point, a lot of those publishers took orders for game toppers. But at that point I had not produced any. So I self-financed uh, to produce 60 toppers. I paid a 
an outlandish, horrible price for them. But I needed to know for sure that they would do what I said. I, I, before I went to Kickstarter, I didn't want to go with my napkin idea and here, here, help me do my dream. I wanted to do something that I knew would work first and, and so I could honor my word and all those things. And thankfully, it turned out when I got that first rail, Chris, uh, I, I mean, tears came to my eyes. I looked at it and I thought, good grief, this is two years of, of sweat and tears and thinking and dreaming and hoping. And and here it is. And it's it's fantastic. And then when we took it to Gen Con, we had 14 publishers using our toppers and people played on those for four days. And I made 86 videos of first reactions from people. How, how do you like the game topper? What wow. do you think about it? Uh, anything you'd change? And they just gushed over it. And it was like, I think we have something special here. What really impressed me was when we went to the uh, the yellow booth, I think it was, they actually had um, the small, like 42 by 42 inch guy. And it was just yeah. sitting on a cruddy card table. And everybody knows just how sturdy those cruddy card tables are. But that thing was bomb proof. It was just, it was solid. And that that's what sold me on the whole idea. Oh, cool. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Stefan Bershow was so kind. Uh, I, I was showing him my little crappy two and a half minute video on my iPad. <laughs> and you, you don't always get to talk to these guys, but I, it was the first time I met him. And he looks at it and a minute and a half into the video, he tops the screen and he goes, I want one of these right now. And yeah. that was really an ex exciting moment. And then, you know, when we got the toppers and we set them in his booth and we had a couple of the homes tables, those are the bigger 36 by 72 that fit on those six foot plastic tables really well. He, he right. we get into the booth. Okay. And I, and my buddy and I were setting them all up the day before Gen Con and Stefan comes over and he goes, Oh, I need to try these out. I haven't seen these yet. So he sits down, puts his arms on top of the rail, and he goes, I made a mistake. And I'm thinking, oh, crap. What doesn't he like? <laughs> Why do we go there, right? <laughs> and, and then he goes, this is like a million bucks. He goes, I should have, I knew it. I should have bought I should have bought all of them. Look at those tables over there. They have nothing on them. They look like crap. He goes, he used a different <laughs> word. <laughs> and he was just like, <laughs> I should have had all of these. And I said, hey, brother, I have two extra toppers. And if you want to use them for the convention, feel free. But I, I need to take them over to the secret cabal meetup. And uh, I said, other than that, and he goes, can I just please buy them? I said, absolutely. They're yours. And uh uh, it was just such a wonderful, and we've had this response from so many publishers. Gray Fox Games, Arcane Wonders has just been a gem and so helpful to me. Brian Pope and Tony and the guys, and Uva Eichert from Academy Games, Shane from Gray Fox Games, um, I, uh, uh, Clay from Capstone Games, Ryan from Mayday Games, Queen Games. I mean, I could just go on and on. Portal Games. Uh, Ignacy has a topper there too. And people just loved them. Everywhere you went, you saw game toppers. Yeah, to the point where I actually did PAX U with uh, Clay from Capstone. And uh, oh. he called you up last minute, I believe. And like, I need a third real quick. And sure enough, at PAX U shows up with three of them and uh, gamed on them with demos for three days. They're, they're, you know, I don't want to sit here. This isn't a commercial for game toppers. It's just they're... <laughs> They're exciting. They're different. They're cool, and uh, you know they're they're great. I mean, just good job. I mean, can't say enough oh. good things about them. <laughs> uh, thanks so much, Clay. Is such a such a great guy too, and he he received our brand new uh, Cadillac boxes that we're shipping everything in. That was our first trial run of whether our shipping would 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 work real well with because we upgraded our boxes really significantly and. Uh, he said, these are awesome. Yeah, no, it was, they were absolutely great. And I love, I mean, the neoprene mat is just, I mean, that's just another selling point. It's, it's, you know, what sets it apart. It's the details and, you know, it's, it's everything from the rail system to that mat. Uh, I love Jamie's from the secret cabal saw his, that mat. I mean, it's oh, beautiful. Those are so cool. You, you know. Yeah, absolutely. If, if I if I had use for a game topper on my set, there would be one right here. Uh, it just might be an <laughs> awkward table to have, I think. But uh, I really love them. But 
Good work. Can well, you do I that? know a guy. They're all made in the USA. <laughs> you do. You yeah, do. that's. And they're made in the USA. <laughs> and when did I ever refuse an accommodation? <laughs> Fair enough. And so getting back to the point, you you actually source them locally, right? Because they're made by local aluminum and things like that for your I know they were for your demo copies, right? Yeah, exactly. In fact, uh, what was wonderful, I used to own a successful computer company. We had 19 employees and did, did a nice job in our local community. And uh, so I have a business background, but the company that I work with was a very small company at the time, but we used to do their computer networks. I know the owner personally. What I didn't know when we came up with this idea that they had grown to the extent that they have grown. They used to do plastic extrusions for a, a small a vinyl light a window company. Well, since then, they've grown to a 120,000 square foot facility. They have locations in Minneapolis and in Fergus wow. Falls. They have several uh, key engineers on staff. Complete. They do all of the kiosk overhead signage for Target, Best Buy. Uh, they have several of these huge CNC machines, great production capability. And when I started researching a manufacturer, I really wanted to do it in the United States. I knew acutely the difference by manufacturing it in the United States and doing it overseas. Had researched that pretty in depth on multiple sources. And I just felt like I want to have this built in the United States. I want to be able to to be able to manage quality control well. I wanted to make sure this thing was, I'm, I'm an I'm a attention to detail guy, so um, little things matter. And so I do the best I can to, to, to make that right. At, during the campaign, it proved itself out because working with Scott, the owner of the company, um, I was able to go in there and say, listen, this is what our backers are saying. We want a, a component tray that will go over the center connector cleat because that's in the way and we can't put a cup holder there. What can we do? That's when we came up with this high density polypropylene components, uh, the cup holders. We were able to innovate that thing in a week and provide a prototype and go, oh, this is gold. And that was because of backer feedback and because I personally could go in there and make that connection and make that all happen. And I think, you know, one thing that sets this system apart from some of the other ones is that, you know, I don't know if I could buy one of the other big name brand tables and then order accessories after the fact and just kind of, oh, well, now all of a sudden I'm drinking wine, so I want to get some of the wine glass holders or, you know, things like that, where I think yours is very replicatable. And I think that's going to be great. Yeah, we try to keep all of our uh, innovations that they will be sustainable from generation to generation of topper. Uh, one of the big uh, features of our toppers is that it comes in two halves. So it, it easily sits on your table, sit, it turns it into a high quality gaming solution in just two minutes. I mean, you pop it together, connect the cleat, roll your mat out, you're gaming. But we came up with the end rail that you could add this to half of your table, of your topper, and all of a sudden now you have a mini topper. And they're perfect for your coffee table, your ottoman. Uh, and people were thrilled about this. In fact, they said, well, can you get me a bundle? Can you give me the rail and then the smaller mat and give us a deal? Yeah, I can do that. So I figured that out. Uh, they said, well, can't we use both halves of our table and make two small toppers? And I said, absolutely. <laughs> so then double rail bundle. And, and 50 to 60% of the people bought the double rail bundle so they could convert their big topper to a mini topper. So if you've got a portable game, now I got one guy, he goes to, he does a lot of play testing and they like to smoke cigars. And he takes the mini topper to the place that they go to the cigar lounge because it's just small enough that they can put on the tables there, but they can still play games in style. Yeah, I, t I see the new market for the old ladies bridge games because then you can like, you you have a card <laughs> holder built right in, you know, there's, yeah. there, there's actually a lot of, there's a lot of potential there. Um, so awesome. Well, and well, we, we are working on some innovations, Chris, that are going to blow your mind. This We are wanting this, like you say, <laughs> to be sustainable for the future. Um, we've got a whole new line of dice towers we're coming out with. These are some that we did. This was the castle. This was the space tower. And they're from uh, Daedalus Productions is doing those for you, right? 
Oh, Ben has been so fantastic from Daedalus. He just did a successful Kickstarter. He's got, I, in my opinion, some of the nicest inserts out there. I love all what all the guys do, um, but he stains his wood. There's extra attention to detail, and I just love it. His Rising Sun insert off the charts. That's a, that's a lot of stuff to pack in that box. Well, you know what? Let's take a quick minute. We're going to pause for a quick break and then we're going to come back and we got to talk about some spice, some food, and uh, I got to get to the bottom of the cooking habit here. So join us. We'll be right back. So excuse me while I butt in on myself here for a quick second. I just wanted to let you guys know uh, about something else that we're starting to do on the channel. We're going to start doing some live streams. Now, I'm not going to sit here and live stream myself playing patchwork or anything like that. We're going to stick with the theme of the show and try to be different. Uh, I invited a few friends on, uh, Pep McDonald, Crystal Paisano, Roy Canaday, myself, and uh, a newcomer, Victor the Geek, uh, joined us in studio. And we had a nice little run through and play of the game. It was a lot of fun. So, I mean, if you want to check that out, that would be great. Now, we're planning on doing some other fiasco sets. It might be a monthly thing that we do. And then, of course, we're going to start doing something else. And I talked to uh, my friend Bruce from North Star Games. And there may be a little Wits and Wagers Vegas featuring some uh, some of our celebrities in the business, as it were, coming down the pike. So stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can catch all of those events. That's it. Let's get back to the show because uh, Berkey is a riot and he's a lot funnier than me. All right, so we're back. And another one of your ventures is near and dear to my heart because i mean i'm a i'm a foodie from way back I, I i may have gone to school to become more than a foodie and you make these happy mouth spices now now where the heck did this come from <laughs> so did you actually go to school for a culinary school i did i did i actually had my degree in culinary arts as it were dude but, yes i didn't know we gotta talk <laughs> <laughs> well if you want to well, go deep french cooking i'm your man i'm your man Woo! uh absolutely well basically what i used to cook professionally and so i cooked for about six years uh, a couple different restaurants and some other other situations uh and i i've continued to do that because i love i to me food is like art uh, I, I paint wildlife too, and I, I, I love I love colors. I love presentation. I love all the those kind of things, and that's the way food is to me. Um, taste is part of it. Presentation is another part of it. And Happy Mouth Spice was my my base spice that I had made, and this is a combination of fourteen all natural ingredients. It's sweet Hungarian paprika, uh, toasted granulated onion, toasted granulated garlic black pepper, kosher salt rather than iodized salt, and then seven Italian aromatics like basil, oregano, thyme, savory, marjoram, and sage, and a little bit of 30,000 heat unit cayenne pepper for just a little bit of heat. You got to have a little nut, to, you know, but we're in the north, so we're, it's a northern palate. It's not Texas palate. Uh, we we, we gonna have to make some Fair hot, enough. happy mouth spice but um so it's not <laughs> yes i i, I, I will buy day. that <laughs> I, I know a friend of mine he makes this spice called fire and brimstone and all i got to do is add a little bit of fire and brimstone to my happy mouth signature spice and we're going to have something really kicked up another notch baby so so i think i think i have a name um, so if it's happy mouth and it's super spicy, it's happy mouth, unhappy butt. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It, it, what comes around goes around. <laughs> Even better. Even better. <laughs> yeah, well, but happy mouth signature I, spice was something that everybody would ask me if I had any. And, and finally they said, 
you should sell it. And so I figured out how to package it and about five years ago started packaging it. Now I'm in about seven retailers and it's a small cottage industry for me. It's not something that makes me a lot of money, but I, I still continue to do it because I love to cook. I love the spices and it brings people a lot of joy. I had three orders while I was at the fulfillment center and I'm like, I don't have time to make happy mouth right now. <laughs> so, so for those of you, what, you know, we're going to geek out a little on food here. It happens. So this is a dry rub. This is not like something we're just going to throw into a liquid and stuff like that, right? So this this involves another wet preparation, but you need to dry rub this on in order to make it work, right? Well, it depends. You know, I, I use it like an all seasoning. Uh, it is not overly based with sodium. My sodium is only about 144 milligrams, a quarter te teaspoon. Oh, good. Whereas like a, a Lowry seasoning is like 388. So I'm a, th a third. Um, and I think that's the right. problem with a lot of the all-purpose spices. They're they're relying on sodium and fillers, you know, for, for pricing and for taste. Whereas if you use good quality spices, you don't have to screw around with all those fillers. You just have good spice. Like sweet Hungarian paprika, it costs me four times as much as Spanish, but it's just got this sweet, smoky flavor that it's a no-brainer to use it because – you know, Spanish paprika just doesn't cut it. Now, you also touched on another thing. And if I if I give you any cooking advice on this entire show and you take yeah. one cooking snippet away from me, dear yes, audience, please. it's um, ditch iodized salt and go 100% kosher salt. Um, it is the single best thing I think that anybody can do for their cooking because... Number one, it, it turns salt into a tactile thing, right? I mean, it's chunky. It's big. Oh. It helps provide a barrier to the grill or the saute pan. And it's not nearly as saline as regular salt. So it doesn't bring all the extra, you know, saltiness, brininess, and sodium to the party. It's the single best thing oh. you can do to enhance your cooking. Am I right? That's such a, it's such like, a great comment, Chris. I'm so <laughs> glad you said that because I, I see this people salting their food and after a while, your taste buds even get immune to it almost. And, and that's not good right. for you for one thing, but it, it, it over exacerbates the taste. I mean, your meats, if you use kosher salt because of that thin flake, it's going to absorb into the meat in a different way. That's so much better. And you'll find you'll be tasting flavors that you didn't taste before. Absolutely. You know, when I was a chef, the um, my key thing was I did not believe in big sauces, big gravies, over the top ingredients. I want you to taste the actual food itself. And, you yeah. know, I yeah, I was that I was that guy who did not want to put salt on the table because I'm like, it should come out of the kitchen seasoned right. And. You mm -hmm. know, it just, I can't, I can't tell the public enough that, you know, just switch, just, you know, I think Morton Salt Company has a lobby that's saying we need iodine to that extreme in our diet. And that's why you need to eat salt. But I think when you get down to it, you don't, I think the sodium has more ill effects than good, you know, from water retention to all those other nasty things. Kosher salt helps a ton. So oh, glad you brought it's that so up. So fantastic. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm thank you for saying that too. Cause so tell me, you said you had your what what was your signature dish, the thing that you love to make? See, I get asked this all the time. And it's um it's really tough because I don't think I ever had one that really stood out. Um and it's I, I loved French provincial cooking, which is southern French. So I love to use lavender. Um Ooh. You know, in my sauces, uh, it's you, you ever want to try an awesome Bernays sauce instead of tarragon, throw a little lavender in there. And it's just it's wow. amazing, um, hmm. you know, but probably the best thing I ever cooked um, is going to be my first Thanksgiving turkey because I had a lavender bush out back and I made a lavender butter and I put it all in between the skin and the turkey and cooked it all up. And it was arguably the best thing and i brined it of course because you, you, you can't cook a turkey without brining it yep. tip number keep it two nice keep it um, nice and moist yep 
and it was just it was amazing it was also i don't know there was just food it shouldn't be about the dish it should be about the experience it's the same thing as board games. Oh my God, we just came full circle. It's not about the dish. It's about the experience. It's about the I see what you, you did there. With. Ah, yes, that- it came around. Um, but yeah, it, it really is. It's about, you know, that memory of that first one. You know, my father was there who's now passed. My father-in-law who recently passed. It's just like, there's just things that stick in my head around that meal that just kind of, you know, that taste food and smell just link us in a way that you know nothing else oh does. and it's universal it crosses all kinds of of barriers cultural barriers that you know food and it's kind of like board games too you can people from all different walks of life can come together and and this is kind of a a, a centerpiece you know when we sit down to have a meal together and 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 be able to fellowship with one another and i love love that about food um, my, my art designed our, our, we built our new home when I owned my computer company. We have a cedar log home out in the country, but we designed our kitchen. Oh, so man. it had a, a, a large center island. And then our dining room is adjacent without a wall. It's all open. And the way our cupboards are set up right. is so that we could quickly serve the table, but we could, everybody could gather around. And as we're cooking, we're fellowshipping, having a great time in the experience and and sometimes we prep for a couple hours, but we're having this great time hanging out and having having drinks and fun and 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 then enjoying the meal. And oftentimes after that, we'd play board games and we'd have these wonderful experiences. You know, it's all good parties start in the kitchen and, you know, they usually end there, too, because it's it is it's you know, I don't I want to be participating in the conversation. I want to be shoved in the kitchen. So. We did the exact same thing when we had our house built. It's a big open floor plan and the kitchen's wide open so that, you know, you can, you, you need to participate. Cooking should be, it should be a part of the experience, not just you show up, the food is ready. Cause guess what? The food's going to be ready on time. You know, right? You're a professional. Yeah. You know, these things. That <laughs> if I say dinner's at seven, guess what's hitting the table at seven. If you want to hang out and have a glass of wine and do those things, then you got to show up early because that's when we're going to do it. Right. Well, and I'll tell you a quick funny story. When you mentioned Happy Mouth Spice being a rub, it, it does work really great as a rub. But uh, my son-in-law, his father owns a trucking company about an hour from us. And and one year they had we had them over to our home and I made them a smoked pork tenderloin with a Happy Mouth Rub derivative. Now, my Happy Mouth Rub um, consists of a little bit of brown sugar, Happy Mouth Spice, a little extra kosher salt because it's a great big loin and then a little bit of cumin okay so rub that baby you score the top rub that baby and then we smoke it with uh, apple chips and cherry chips so that it's not a super harsh smoke and and smoke that baby for about six hours on very low temp so we break down the tissues and it's super tender cut with a knife you know with your fork type of thing So I, I serve this to them, and then we make three three gallons of homemade barbecue sauce, and it's more on the savory side than it is the sweet <laughs> side. Okay, so we make this thing, and Tim, the owner of the company, and my father, my son in law's father, goes, "This is awesome. Would you make this for all these truckers?" I said, "Yeah, I can do that." Well, what I didn't know, it's fifty truckers. <laughs> so. <laughs> I show up with three cases of smoked pork loin and they go nuts over it. Well, the next year he asked me, he says, well, and, you know, getting these truckers on a Saturday to a safety compliance meeting is like pulling teeth, right? Well, these truckers were so <laughs> thrilled. They were, oh, oh, that is, is your father-in-law coming again? Is he bringing that? Is he bringing that loin? Is he? <laughs> so then I, I make uh, smoked ribs. And I have an amazing rib recipe that my dad and I have kind of te- tag teamed on. So for the last five years, I've been making 27 racks of baby back ribs smoked, basically Holy like I cow. just explained to you. And when I walk in there, they're about an hour from the meeting being over. And it's like total distraction because Berkey's there with a whole cooler full of ribs, baby. And 
and we're having at it. How how big is your smoker that you can get all this done? I mean, I'm sure you're not doing it all one time. You're batching it, but still, that's a lot of smoking. I'll, I'll let you in on a little trick. Um, I have two smokers. I have an electric smoker and a gas smoker. But when you smoke all your ribs, um, I parboil mine first. I take the membranes off because okay. that's better. <clears throat> Excuse me. But then... Um, then I smoke that. It's rubbed with the Happy Mouse Spice. It's smoked for about three hours because at that point, they're already cooked. I'm just wanting to tenderize, break down the tissues. I want this stuff to just fall off the bone. Okay, we get that great glazing and that smoke on them. Then I take them all out and I cool them all in roaster pans. Take your roaster pan, these great big pans. And for me, it takes me three of them, okay, to do all of this three of these pans, you put the rack on the bottom and put some chicken broth in there, not to where it will touch the ribs, but then you reheat them the next morning. It rehydrates. Okay. You don't lose any of the flavor. They're just steaming hot, luscious. I mean, you you put those in your mouth and they just it just dribbles out of your mouth. And I mean, they're just the most delectable ribs I've ever eaten. And I think, you know, you, you kind of you touch on the one thing that the uh, the outdoor smoker grilling um, briquette using person does. And that is multi type of cooking. Like it's not just one thing. You can't just bake it. You can't just grill it. It's, it's smoked, it's baked, it's steamed. And it's that that's the trick. It's, it's all these processes. And that's, oh, yeah, it that's takes a, me, it takes me two full days uh, to do all of this. So it, it's a big sure. deal, but there's something about the time. Um, you know, I like a good quick seared steak as much as anyone else. And there's nothing wrong with that. Happy Mouth is a, a great solution for that. But when we're when we're cooking for large people, you got to think about your timing and all of that type of thing too. So to be able to prepare it in a way where you still maintain your flavor and it doesn't taste like it's been on a hot plate, right? Yeah, exactly. And it's, uh, I mean, it really shows. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not, a, I'm not the grilling guy. I usually don't have that kind of time. Um, but I, I have a feeling that it will turn up at some point in my life because I, I enjoy the food way too much. All oh right. yeah. I, so, I bet you have, you, you have it in you, brother. We're, we'll have to talk. <laughs> All right. Well, this seems like a good place to stop talking because I want to go grab a snack. Um, but you guys <laughs> watch this informative piece while I grab a quick bite to eat. And then we're going to come back because I think it's important to shine a little light on uh, Berkey's alter ego, a little French transplant called the Badger. So stay tuned for ah. that after this. <laughs> This week's shout out goes out to the Tuesday Night Podcast. Join Alan Gerding as he talks to a wide variety of people in the industry and is absolutely entertaining to boot. Be sure to check them out at TuesdayNightGames.com. All right, <laughs> welcome back. So, so once upon a time, there was a little show and... Uh, this little, this little strange English transplant into France was on it, and he was the Badger, and he used to do this badger. board games. Dot dot dot. You know, he did his he did his thing, and it was it was interesting, and it was ended up being more board games I couldn't own, and somehow you and him hooked up, and ended up making a podcast. So what the <laughs> heck? How do you how do you in Minnesota, find yeah, sure. some betcha. little transplant in, in the, I guess it's uh, middle of France. And uh, how, do you make, how do you make a show out of that? <laughs> it's kind of funny how that all happened because Barry, his, his name is pronounced Doublet. But he's English, so Doublet is the, is the right pronunciation. But I always called him Barry Dublet because he was from France. Sure. Well, he was doing these little, <laughs> he, 
these little segments for the Dice Tower. And I, he just cracked me up. I just love this guy. And I have a zany, funny, little off kilter. You know, I, I love the weird stuff. I love Jack Black. You know, I love that kind of humor. Sure. Nacho Libre, one of my top, top favorite movies. <laughs> uh, I just love that. You remember that time when I ripped my blouse and they were shouting out my name? <laughs> I love that crap. Absolutely. Princess Bride. I I love that stuff. Well, Barry just, I mean, he would randomly pop into a voice just like I would do. And and I just love this guy. Well, I reached out to him on Messenger one time and I just said, man, I really like your stuff. I think it's just really great. And we just started messaging a little bit. And and then all of a sudden we started talking. I said, well, what do you think about doing a podcast? I said, we could do it different than anybody is doing it. We don't have to just talk about board games. We can, we can be our zany selves and and, and enjoy enjoy that process. And uh, it it just transformed from there that we started the Berkey and Badger board game babble show. He's Badger the Brave. I'm Berkey, of course. So we had this. I was helping Arcane Wonders with several projects. The Sheriff of Nottingham, and then the Good King of England and Royals. And then the Viking chieftain in spoils of war. And so I was becoming this kind of character, helping create this customer experience for Arcane Wonders. And when that all happened, Barry and I just said, hey, let's do this. And let's let's take those themes and incorporate it into our show. So we created Birthday and Badger board game Babble. So we can babble about whatever we want to talk about. But... We also carried on this theme of the the kingdom of Babylon, where we interview guests and we have this <laughs> game show. Yeah, it's so much fun. Uh, you had just mentioned we were talking offline that you know, Chaz Mahler was just on the show and he's been on the show twice. So he's a two timer. Now, that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's been on but here, been so on he might show. have been a three-timer. <laughs> a three-timer, okay. He'll love to hear that. But we've had had a ton of celebrity, board game celebrities, if you will. Scott Alden was on the show, Lance Meister. We've had a lot of, lot of notables over the years. We have actually are on our 55th episode coming up for the Berkey and Badger show, and it's on iTunes and Stitcher. So. Yeah, it's just been a lot of fun. We're not crazy worried about numbers and all that nonsense we just want to have fun talking about board games and one of the things that we do is we have have our when we have a guest on we do a special game show and then we also have a babble topic and so we take that topic and explore it with the guest and then other times or it's just Berkey and Badger we have the Knights of Babylon. And this is a section where we do an in-depth review of a game and then give it a rating and that kind of thing. Cool. And it's uh, I listened to a couple today in preparation. Got to do my homework as a host. And uh, I <laughs> I forgot how much I like Barry. I kind of he, he hasn't been doing as much as I'd like because obviously he's a busy guy. Uh, I, I forget what he does for a living, but doesn't he work for like the champagne companies in France, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, he was actually he was actually a horticulturist and he did a lot of work, but he had some repetitive elbow injury issues. He's also an amazing magician. Uh, <laughs> not really? magician, mu- musician. Um he plays oh, okay. amazing music sorry sorry uh, he's a musician and what he has done is he has created the soundtrack uh, for several of these games with monolith and for seventh continent so he's made these amazing musical scores he has this uh, track called one night uh, that is this zombie themed ominous sounding thing that's fantastic uh, that you can get on his his uh, Shopify or, or online iTunes store. But Barry is just amazing. He's uh, he's just a funny guy. He's a, a really super heartfelt man. Uh, he's a family man. He has a, a daughter and and just a new baby boy that he calls Robin from Batman. <laughs> <laughs> and him and I just, I mean, we just, we just click. Uh, we just have fun chatting about the show, what we're going to do coming up. Um, we both just 
I mean, we just we're just really good friends and we've never met. I was going to ask you that next because Gary and I have met probably oh oh god, I think maybe if we've spent 5 hours together total in the last year, it would be an overstatement. But like you, it's just sometimes you don't know. You just got to the chemistry just works and you're just like, you know what? We kind of have the same brain mindset. And I get to pick on Gary all the time. And if you don't follow me on Twitter, you'll notice that I, I do it there too. Um, you know, it's it's not an act. I, I really pick on him. So so how does that work? Like you, you guys haven't met. I mean, Barry, does he doesn't get a chance to come over here very often. I don't even think he has yet. I think he's done a couple of French conventions and things like the French convention. Um, he's done a couple of things over there, but he's never really gotten to come over here like some of the other people have, right? Yeah, he's actually not been to the U.S. that I understand, but he's been to the United Kingdom. Hopefully this year, because of Game Toppers, I'm going to be able to go to the United K to the UK Games Fair, and I'm hoping also to go to Essen. That's one of the big things we're doing with Game Toppers is we want to have international distribution that's affordable for the backers, and we're already working on tons of plans to do that. And I'm hoping that we're going to be able to connect uh, at that level, and maybe you never know. Barry's been doing a lot of work with uh, Monolith Games doing soundtracks and preview videos. His website is boardgameseverybodyshould.com. And and Barry posts the, I mean, he's got this Patreon and you should see the Patreon videos that this man makes. They're fantastic. He shows all the reviews he's been doing. He shows all the podcast stuff he's doing. He edits the podcast. So we do this live Google Hangout where you can ask questions and it's it's live. So you never know what's going to happen. And we never follow the script. You know, it's it's just all of off not. the off the hip. <laughs> you know, we have a script, but we never follow it. And then he he <laughs> manages to make this thing beautiful, this audio podcast that he makes from iTunes. It's classy. I mean, there's no reason if people knew about it, I think they would really enjoy it because it's it's just fun gaming, you know, centric type of talk. You know, it's funny you, you say that. And I, I actually think I said that the other day is scripts are kind of like plans in war. They never survive first contact with the enemy. It just it never, <laughs> it, it, I can have everything written down here and what I want to talk about. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to say yep, half of that exactly. because it's like we, we get lost in our conversations and notes are helpful. But in the end, you know, this is what matters and that's what matters. So that's exactly. Awesome. This so, is about us interacting. This is about the experience and what we what we love enjoy together so absolutely so i feel it's time to play a game and i think that we're gonna have to do a little games with the guests introducing the climbers a stacking and pathfinding game with a race to the top for two to five players to see who can be the last one standing. Using solid wooden components, gorgeous paint, this game certainly stands out on any table. Can you place, climb, and use special powers to be the first and only person to reach the top? Let's find out when you order your copy from Simply Complex Games, a division of Capstone Games. All right, so tonight with Berkey here, we're going to play a different kind of game because I haven't run out of them yet. And uh, what we're going to do is I make Gary come up with a list of games and he is going to give each one of us a title and we have to come up with a food dish to kind of complement the game. Like if, hmm. like if we're going to play, I don't know, we're going to play Strasbourg, which is the Steffenfeld game. I would say I'd like a nice dish of soft pretzels and stuff like that because that's what's in the game. And of course, all of you have no idea what I'm talking about except for the few Feld fans out there, but you get the point. We're going to try and come up with a dish and then we're going to make Gary the judge. Um, so play to your audience. Unfortunately, I think you might have a leg up here. Um, so <laughs> we'll, we'll go from there. This so is going to be absolutely to delicious. 
<laughs> delicious and it's i i'm i'm ready for fourth breakfast so it's perfect timing so all right at this point i'm going to turn it over to gary gary okay. um let's uh let's get this show in the room okay so um after someone stops squeaking a chair upstairs but um no we could go ahead and continue so i'm gonna have uh chris how about we have you start since uh you are the host of the show uh and we usually always have the guest start, but now we'll do this week. We'll have Chris start. But um, Chris, how about you start I'll with put uh, me in the hot seat? Yeah, how about you start with Ooh. any eighteen XX game, just eighteen XX in general? Okay. <laughs> wow. So so when you go eighteen XX, you're going like we're talking eighteen hundreds, old school. I'm thinking we're gonna go basic hanger steak. Uh, we're just gonna like slow roast that over an open fire probably going to throw a few like uh some baked potatoes in there too we're going to like tinfoil them and throw them right straight in the campfire um maybe we'll make some kind of cool butter with it you know there might be some herbs laying around in the middle of the uh out in the middle of the land here but i i, I just think that this just screams good old-fashioned hanger steak maybe some like you know rye whiskey from a jug something you'd find right <laughs> off the back of a chuck wagon so all right. that's it that's what i'm saying all right so you know what chris um that sounds absolutely delicious but i got you minus did. one point because i'm on a low carb but. diet so you're at three points there so <laughs> The potatoes. The potatoes the, killed me. It's it's the potatoes, man. It's the potatoes. Now, now I've Chris, taken uh, note. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Kevin, let's. Uh, how about you do? Um, how about you do? How about you do? No thanks. No thanks. Oh wow. <laughs> no thanks that means we're gonna push our luck so we're gonna try to try to bring it to the edge of what is low carb okay <laughs> so we're gonna take oh, this no. cauliflower and we're gonna mash it okay and we're gonna add provolone <laughs> cheese baby provolone cheese and we're gonna add cheddar cheese and a little cream of cheese because cream cheese that pushes just on the edge, but we're gonna mix it all together and we're gonna mix these mashed potatoes and we're gonna bake it and make this potato substitute that is to die for. And then we're going to make braised stewed uh, beef ribs and we're going to cook those down. We're gonna have some Happy Mouth Spice Baby, another notch. We're going to we kick are. those up of course we are. and it's going to have this gravy that is like to die for. And we're going to pour that over all of that. <laughs> and, and we're low carving it and the flavors are bursting out of our mouth. <laughs> we are so excited. And that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> all right. All right, oh. Kevin. Kevin, you know what I got to say for oh. that one? All right. You, you got four points, but I have to minus a point because that is definitely a lot of calories in that. No matter how, no matter how great that sounds, <laughs> but but I'm adding another point back on it just because you want me over with saying that we're going to be pushing the limit what? because that is the theme of no thanks. So, uh, <laughs> oh. so currently Kevin's. I'm at learning four the points. rules as we go here. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> I'm just making these up as we go. Okay, so, um, Chris, uh, your game is yes. going to be Cards Against Humanity. Uh, Cards Against Humanity is everything that's wrong with the world today in a little black box. So <laughs> we're going to go with, let's see, this has to be like, the worst possible meal that you could have. So, <laughs> heart attack on a plate. All right. Oh, so, boy. we're, we're going to start off with a big, fat burger. We are going to top this thing with everything that's offensive to people. So, it's going to get every kind of bacon. So, it's going to get big, thick-cut bacon. We'll throw some Canadian bacon in there. Uh, we're yeah, going to throw some cheese on that. You know what else we need to throw? We need to throw some fried chicken liver 
on top of that because I think that that just needs to be on this burger. It's gonna it's gonna be like a pate, and it's just gonna melt into this burger and make this thing this big fat juicy mess. And then I think we need to throw. You know what? It needs caramelized onions on there too. Like we need to definitely need to have like some sweetness. This stuff's gonna be like overly sweet. It's just gonna be a, a again offensive to your taste buds. And then we're gonna put it on a pretzel bun because the brioche bun would be better. But I think the pretzel bun is just trendy and hipster enough <laughs> to appeal to that person who wants the Cards Against Humanity burger. And then, of course, we have to flame top it so it's black, so it matches the card. And then it has to, like, have, maybe I'll have, like, little C-A-H logo on it. So I think that is my Cards Against Humanity burger of doom. <laughs> All right. All right, Chris. So uh, I like the idea. I like that idea a lot. <laughs> You start out as a four. Over the top. You start out, yeah. You start out as a four with matching the theme and everything. Being okay. like, oh, I gotta just make the worst thing. I had to take off a point worst because thing. the worst thing doesn't include bacon in it. Come on, man. You don't. Bacon has the best things in it. You, you want the but but I said bacon. I, I said bacon. It's got both regular bacon and Canadian bacon. So like be, it. it that, that, that sounds amazing. That sounds family. amazing, though. <laughs> right. But but I'll give you back a point because of the hipster pretzel bun. So you have four points. So... <laughs> Very respectable. Very respectable. <laughs> okay. So, I would have uh... taken two points off for the chicken liver, though. <laughs> oh. Have you never had like pate on a burger? Oh my goodness! It just like oh, oh so I, I would have put some avocado in there. <laughs> and maybe a boy okay. and, and a fried egg. Well, uh, wow, that would have okay, been a okay, five because that would have he, totally he, hipstered it. Kevin nailed that. <laughs> Kevin nailed that with that. You can give him one of those points. <laughs> all right, um, all right. So Kevin, uh, awesome. Your game is going to be, uh, one night ultimate werewolf. Ooh. Werewolves of London. Werewolves. Okay, there's townspeople. Hmm. Ultimate werewolf. Oh, this has got to be one of these old school dishes. I mean, where we are making, we're around an open campfire and we are preparing roasted meat. Oh, we must have roasted meat. Um, we will have lamb. That's what we're going to do. Yeah, baby. We're going to have lamb shank. And this is going to be rubbed with happy mouse spice with a little extra rosemary and a little extra cumin and a little bit of extra <laughs> kosher salt. We're roasting this over a, a fire. We're telling our stories and we're talking about, and then we've got this wonderful lamb dish. And then we must have a stew beside it where we're having carrots and some things that are in a gravy. And we're going to serve this over that last dish that I talked about, those, those smoked cauliflower, smoked Gouda, provolone cheese, and this smoked lamb shank. Oh, can you imagine the taste of this smoked lamb shank with rosemary? And oh, it's going to be fantastic. And we're going to feel like we're in the werewolf world. There you go. You know and what? I think you need to call that a wolf in lamb's clothing. I think. Oh my God. <laughs> That's, that, that sealed it right there. <laughs> But um, I no. Like the funny it. thing about that when I when I asked that, I was like, I don't know what kind of food he's gonna go with this. But yeah, you nailed that. Like, I was, like when the second you said like we gotta bring like back to the old time stuff like that, I was like, yeah, that is actually the theme of yeah, that actually does work. And then you said lamb, I'm like, oh, that yeah, this all sounds. Re and then you even plug in your own spice. That that just topped it off right there. So yeah, <laughs> so Kevin, you definitely got four points for that one. Being very generous in this game so far. Happy mouth. I think a Fogo, Fogo de Cows, and they always bring out lamb chops and they bring out a lamb shank. And I love that. But if they would incorporate my spices on there, it would take it to another notch. We got to send them some emails. <laughs> Missing <Just> market. <laughs> Guys are doing this all wrong. 
Okay, uh, Chris, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw you right. a curveball. Um, curveball. Yeah. Because they've been so easy. Yeah, these have been. Easy <laughs> <about>. <laughs> this, is, this is crazy, man. This is crazy. Um, okay, how about um, I, I'm just gonna make it general because I feel like it'll almost be too hard to spe- specify this. I'm just gonna say any of the escape room games. That's the curveball. Any of the wow. escape room games. If you can't think of anything, we could just move on to the next thing. I got, I got a ton more. Do you got anything? All right, all right. You got no, something? I got it. I got okay. it. Okay. I got it. All right. So you're in an escape room. So an escape room is all about trying to get out. It's about primal instinct. It's about you know just kind of when I, when I think of that with food, I'm thinking kind of just kind of ripping things from the bone and i i i think i gotta go with like a a whole roasted chicken and so you know maybe there was one running around in the escape room and maybe you were able to capture it sure but i think there's just something about you don't get knives and forks when you have to eat this chicken you gotta rip it or you got to figure out a puzzle to get the knife and fork, but that's besides the point. But the idea is, is that it's primal, it's it's bones, and it's just kind of, you know, it takes me back, man. You grab a drumstick and you just kind of shred it. So we're going to go with that. Um, now, the best way to roast a chicken, uh, pro tip out there, I, I want to put some kosher salt. I'm going to crack some pepper on it, and I'm going to put some truffle oil on top of that, some white truffle oil, and I'm just gonna slow roast that sucker. I'm gonna, and I'm gonna shove all kinds of vegetables in there, and it's just gonna be like you're gonna pull out these these nice roasted carrots that are gonna have all these flavors of this truffle oil and the chicken just kind of going in there, and then you, you just gotta rip into it your, like your hands, and maybe we'll throw some couscous around there. It'll k- kind of have like a little bit of a Moroccan thing going on. But that's only to give a nod to the hand eating. But I, I that's where you got to go. I think it's got to be like ah, oh, visceral, physical, and you got to man who lo- who looks at a chicken and goes, I know how to eat that. You just got to rip and tear and figure it out like you do in escape room. So there you go, roasted chicken. If guys, if if anyone if anyone owns an escape room place, and you ever see this guy yeah. walk in there, don't let him in there. Because he's gonna rip it apart, apparently. They tell you, they tell you apart everything. They tell you one every rule. Book. They tell you no, one you rule. Gotta they open say... every book. Open every drawer. You gotta, you gotta shred it. You gotta don't destroy anything, man. They tell you one rule: it's don't destroy anything in eye level. Anything eye level, you keep. So, um, so Garrett, because you gotta come to my escape room, you can shred it. <laughs> Because Chris is the absolute destruction of escape rooms, I got to give you a three for that one. I like the chicken idea, Ugh. but because you, you you're gonna destroy that that part opposite of an escape room, man. You don't destroy. It. It's got to give you a three, man. So, Ugh. all right, that's only because you've been researching them because you want to open one, Gary. That's not fair. I want to open up a cafe. But it wouldn't be a bad idea no. having a uh, escape room no. in the back. <laughs> but um, all right, Kevin, uh, yours is going to be. Let's 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 do Clank. Let's do Clank. Ooh, Clank. Regular Clank. Just whatever, whichever mm. one you could think of uh, the best thing for. I'm pretty funny. Well, you now have three to choose from. Yep. Wow. A four. Regular. I have water, to think. I think. Future. I have to think of mummy. regular, regular Clank. Ooh, but we're gonna we're gonna top in Clank the Mummy's expansion. Okay. Okay. So All there's right. two things that are gonna Hashtag be happening. Play here. Renegade Games. <laughs> play Renegade Games, baby. They are knocking it out of the park. By the yeah. way. Okay. So we have Clank, and we've got the Mummy's Tomb. One of the things that I love about India food is something called gaan. And gaan is this flat bread that is, is, has butter and garlic on it. It is thin and it is tender. It is amazing. So we're going to make some gaan as a side dish. 
Okay, that's one thing. But Clank, we're delving into the dungeon. Okay, we've got this thing going on that that uh, it's like it's like Ghibli when he says meat right off the bone because we're dungeon <laughs> delving, and we see these ribs. Oh, can you think of baby back ribs? smoked in a smoker with cherry and apple wood with Burke's Happy Mouse Spice rubbed all over them. And then we think about them smoked for like three hours. So they like melt off of the bone and it has this savory, a little slight bit of sweet, but basically a savory flavor and we're grabbing these ribs and we're having this naan uh, that is a side dish and we're also putting probably put some type of a a side vegetable that is with it that that just kicks it up another notch and get, brings all the food groups into play that's what i'm thinking about with clank all right so you're thinking of I totally... naan ribs and uh and vegetables, you yeah. said at the very end there, right? And some beautiful vegetables. Let's say that our vegetables are going to be grilled asparagus, bacon-wrapped asparagus with a little Happy Mouth spice. They've got this great glaze upon them. It, it has this dungeon delving uh, uh, carnage feel I to it. <laughs> I totally brought a knife to a gunfight. <laughs> totally. <laughs> no, I, I agree. <laughs> no, I don't. But like, no, that was that was a really good one, Berkey. Uh, I'm going to give you four points for that one, just to make this even more of a landslide. Not. Just... <laughs> what? I, 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 I'm sorry, Chris. This is just uh, uh, it's not up to me. I'm just reading the rules here, and I'm just basically going off of the rules. I'm sorry. I wrote the a... rules. <laughs> Regardless, Chris, uh, break it all. The rules, did not baby. write them properly, apparently. Chris, um, I want you to it'll do... be updated in the FAQ. <laughs> a meal for Rhino Hero. Rhino Hero. Do you not know it? I can pass. Um. I just want to pass because it's too. I'm I'm thinking meats again, and I want to kind of get away from that. Got to okay. build, 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 build. Yeah. Okay. How about uh? Yeah, exactly. How about Twilight Imperium? Do you got? Oh that? my god! Do you got that? Oh. Or should I move again? Move again. Can... Okay. Because again, I'm just I'm I'm thinking like lion meat. Um. Well, what about uh? <laughs> well, what about uh? Not alone. No, that's... See, that'd be like the escape room. Okay. How about you give me? How about you throw something like Ticket to Ride at me? Do something stupid like that. How about Monopoly? <laughs> nah, <laughs> that's well, not stupid no. enough for you. That's, <laughs> that's as stupid no, as it no, gets. No, no, I'm just no, saying. Sean. No. <laughs> I got direction with Ticket to Ride. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, Berkey's about... got this, but I, I, I can pull it. We got to rig it a little bit. Okay. Um. How? How about uh? Okay. How about you do then Ticket to Ride? Ticket to Ride. It's a lot like 18xx. All right. So. Okay. Let's go off the rails. Um. And let's. We're going to go Ticket to Ride France because we're going to go back to where my roots come from here in the culinary Ooh, world. Oh, boy. And here we're we going to go. go. All right. All right. So so now we are going to go with some uh, – we're going to go with a nice sea bass because, you know, I think that, you know, we we need a fish here. We've, we've talked a lot of meat tonight and, you know – we, we we need something else other than me. We need to appeal some to some different people. So we're going to go with a nice piece of sea bass, and we're going to do that what's called empapiote, which is uh, we're going to wrap that in a parchment bag, and we're going to put mm -hmm. a little uh, we're going to put some fresh veg in there. We're going to put a couple like lemon slices, 
Uh, we're going to put nice. some fresh herbs. So we're going to go like, let's go French. So we're going to break out some, uh, some of that lavender. We're going to pop a little <laughs> bit of that in there. Maybe some fresh sprigs of thyme. Mm. We're going to just sprinkle that with the kosher salt because we all are now buying kosher salt. We're not buying that stupid iodized salt anymore. <laughs> and we're just going to, we're going to seal up this bag and we're going to put it in the oven and we're going to low and slow. You know, fish mm. loves low and slow as much as meat does. Sea bass so has the... some nice fats in there. We want, oh, we just want to kind of, just want to slow cook this sucker. So we're going to do that. We're going to, we're going to poach it in its own juices. Then we're going to pull it out and we're going to serve it on a plate. We're going to do it over, we're going to do it over hair couvert. So hair couvert mm. are really small, thin green beans. And we're going to take those suckers. You don't even need to like cook these in water. You can just kind of saute them up a quickly with some fresh slivers of garlic in there. And we're going to, again, we're going to use a little bit of that salt, some cracked pepper. Um, and it, we're just going to put this fish on there and then we're going to like just dust it with a, a quick shot of a half of a lemon right on top at the last minute. And I think it's just going to be you are going to be amazed at the fragrance that comes off this fish and how light it just flakes away. I mean, the ribs are good. The ribs are awesome, but this is just going to, this is just going to fall apart. It's going to be so moist and tender and that's it. So sea bass and popillot or air couvert is where I'm going to go with that one. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Chris, that sounded, that sounded you, amazing. But you don't like this, but, 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 but you just, that was, that was a food for happy salmon. So I'm giving you one point. No, I'm joking. No, no, I'm not not giving you four points. Don't do that to me. <laughs> No, you really need good. to go on the, uh, on the, the next best, best uh, food network chef because that was beautiful, brother. <laughs> uh, and yeah, by just... the way, that that is my favorite way to prepare fish. It just oh, it's just poached. Sous vide is a whole nother episode. Maybe I'll do a triangle episode with you, myself, and Chris Miller, and we'll do a sous vide show. Um, oh, because we're on. That, <laughs> yeah, that definitely needs to be talked about. So, Barry, so... Gary, what was the score of that game? Well, the game's not over. We have one more round. Kevin, you're gonna has... do one more round? No, I mean w one more, one more, just one more. Kevin has to do one more. Yeah, what, <laughs> what did you score? What did you score, Chris, on on that one? Oh, he got a four. He got a four on that one. He got a four. Oh, that, that, that sounded really. All right, cool. so where are we sitting at? Nice. So what does he need to get to win? Is what I, I guess, where I'm going with this. Uh, <laughs> I think he just needs to get a two. <laughs> so, so, Franks and beans. <laughs> okay. Hopefully, I'm not going to just use scrambled eggs and bacon. Okay. okay um, uh, Kevin, how about uh, how about I give you um, ooh, how about food chain magnate? Oh, food chain magnate. Oh, uh, this is this is really good. Um, okay, this is the way we're gonna play this baby. This is complicated, and it might might seem like it's fast food, but we're not going fast food. We're going classic dining, and we're going to make a dish that that is not only beautiful in its presentation. It's affordable so that most people will be able to buy it. But we're going to go with Alice Spring Chicken. Alice Spring Chicken is a chicken breast, and we get a large, plump chicken breast. We slice it in the middle, and what we do is we put a little Happy Mouse Spice in there, but then we stuff it with a provolone cheese, a little bit of cheddar, a little bit of uh, cream cheese, and we stuff it. OK, then we put a little fresh basil over the top of it. Another little bit of Happy Mouse Spice. We grill the chicken. Then we take that chicken. We only half grill it to half cook. And then we put it in the oven. We put 
cheddar cheese across the top and a little bit of bacon that we fresh fried in it, smoked bacon, not just normal bacon, smoked bacon. We put that across the top. Then we garnish that with fresh steamed broccoli. Okay, we've got that in the dish. And all of a sudden, we have this affordable, classy looking presentation, juicy Alice Spring chicken dish that goes along with this theme. And just a double check, you said that was a stuffed chicken, right? Yeah, it's a stuffed chicken breast where we butterfly the breast, but then we grill it. Okay, that that sounds like wow. that sounds like I need to stop yeah, my that diet. Sounds... <laughs> <laughs> and and this this I think is most of the stuff this says that. Healthy. This is like beautifully presented. And oh yet yeah, it's very affordable to serve. Yeah, everything you did say was actually was low carb. Actually, now that I think about you, because you did say, it's, yeah. The only the only trick is you know, it's it's not using. Everybody wants to like throw a ton of cheese on stuff, man. Just calm down. Spend a little bit more. Get a really awesome cheese and just throw a little bit. Like you get that dry sharp provolone in there. You don't need like a ton. You just need a couple pieces. Uh, uh, audience members, uh, his, uh, Chris's uh, opinions do not reflect everyone here him. on uh, Game All Night. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to put that out here. There. So, um, uh, yeah, the more cheese, the better. <laughs> no, but no, but uh, okay, Kevin. Yeah, that was that was easily a four. That was definitely. Uh-huh. If I could if I could get some late night dining or something like that, that'd be freaking awesome, and that definitely fits food chain magnate. So with the ending score of, uh, let's actually start with the uh, second place first, with Chris coming up at, behind with uh, fourteen points, and then Kevin with a perfect sixteen points. The winner. Oh of my today's goodness! I got game. swept. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, yeah. You just had to. You just had to destroy an escape room. Why would you do that? <laughs> but um, Dude, but you got to tear it apart. You got to find the clues. <laughs> There's a zombie tied to a chain in the corner. I got to get out. <laughs> I can't tell you guys how hungry I am right now. Oh my god! Right? Can we end this show, please? Chris, I mean, end I the show. End on... Supper. Chris, end the show. Just end the show. End Thank on... you. <laughs> that note tonight's episode is brought to you by happy mouth seasonings and of course <laughs> happymouth.net so com. there you go um i know <laughs> i will be ordering some soon although i hear fulfillment's a little slow while he gets the tables out but Berkey, <laughs> where can they find definitely you <laughs> where can we find you on the internet Well, you can find me at Berkey at GameToppersLLC.com. That's where you're going to find if you're interested in our Game Toppers product. If you'd like to check out our podcast at Berkey and Badger Board Game Babble Show, you can check us out at BoardGameTheater.com. That's our YouTube channel where our family dresses up in costume, plays board games, has a lot of fun. Uh, There's some great content there that you might enjoy. But you can check us out at, at Twitter at Board Game Tables LLC or at Kimpek, K I M P E K, at Board Game Theater or Berkey and Badger. We're all over the place. We love to interact with you folks. So please uh, feel free to email me or we, we love that. So I, I love the community and thanks so much for uh, allowing me on the show there, Chris. Uh, it, it has been a pleasure. I love talking food. Um, I, I don't even think we mentioned a game outside of the games, um, but we had a lot of fun tonight. And uh, if you haven't seen any of the work he does, uh, you're, you're missing out. And you know what? Check out the podcast. I mean, it, it, I think it flies under the radar, but it, it was highly entertaining. I had a lot of fun this afternoon. I'm going to add it back into the rotation. So, you know, great oh, job nice. there. Give my best over there to Barry because he's he's kind of a nut and I, I appreciate nuts. So yeah, to, uh, to my friend who also drinks bullet bourbon um, and I'm using my game toppers glass that I got from you at Gen Con this year. Let's, uh, 
let's say good night and thank you very much for being on the show. Yeah, thanks so much, Chris, for having me on. Gary, what a pleasure. You guys are awesome. I wish you all the best of luck in the world. All right, so that's a wrap. So be sure to tune in next week when we have a great guest on Game All Night. Well, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed our efforts at Comedy and Fun, please support us on Pod Pledge. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And of course, don't forget to engage with us on Board Game Geek Guild 3134. You can also check us out on our website, GameAllNightShow.com. This show has been made possible through supporters like these. Angry Octopus. You have a game topper massage table? <laughs> yeah, we're going to convert it into a massage table, too. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.